Hi everyone, and welcome again to my audio-visual channel. My name is Gabriella Handel, and I'm a draftsman and also the host of the show A Conversation About Art. During each episode, I look for the meaning of art and beauty through conversations with colleagues in different artistic fields. Today, I offer you episode 69, and I will talk with artist Michael Klein. If you'd like to support this podcast, you can do so by liking and sharing this video and also by subscribing to my audio-visual channel. These are all immediate and at no additional cost to you. If you'd like to show your support with money, it's also very welcome and appreciated. You can do so by purchasing my drawings directly from my website, uh, which is just gabriellahandle.com. You can purchase crafts I make from eBay, buy prints of my drawing in my imprint store, or leaving me a tip. Thank you very much for your time and attention in watching this episode, and do leave a comment so I know you were here. I hope you enjoy it. Okay. All right. Hi, everyone, and uh, welcome again to my audiovisual channel. I'm talking with artist Michael Klein today. Welcome to a conversation about art. Uh, Michael, you are episode number 69. Please tell our listeners and viewers who you are and what you do. Great. Uh, well, first off, thank you, Gabriella, for having me. Uh, my name is Michael Klein, and uh, I am now 42 years old. I'm a realist painter. I've been doing this most of my life. I started very young, uh, went through kind of seven years of academic training, uh, started showing in New York. Of what uh, training? And, Sorry. Uh, academic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So through the um, atelier system, kind of uh, private schools, uh, and um, yeah, so I've had uh, four or five solo shows throughout the years uh, in New York and uh, on the West Coast, uh, one in Charleston. And I'm currently uh, located in Western Massachusetts, heading a project uh, called the New Salem Museum and Academy of Fine Art. And uh, yeah, beyond that, I'm married uh, almost 19 years. Uh, nice. Yeah, so just enjoying life. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. Being married is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we, we got married in 2019, and there was something about just like being in the ceremony and, you know, the the officiator guy just being very calm and sweet, even though he does it all the time, because it was like in the in the Brooklyn courthouse. Okay. Yep. And and just like it was somehow very in intimate, even though you know they have lots of people going through there every mm -hmm. few minutes. You know, it's very quick. But there was something about that. And then when he was done, you know, I pronounced you husband and wife, and it was just like a thing. And it was like, wow, this is this is cool. You know, yeah, special. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it is cool. really special. Um. Yes. Okay. And so when when did you start making stuff? And versus when did you start uh, thinking of yourself or referring to yourself as an artist? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so I guess technically it would be uh, with the conception of uh, kind of a first body of work in, in and around uh, 2005 when I was uh, finishing up my studies, thinking about art, thinking about what I wanted to say kind of trying to figure out how I would separate myself from the pack. Um, but before that, I mean, I obviously was always attempting uh, to make art. It just wasn't as, uh, uh, you know, the efforts weren't obviously what they are after you've kind of set aside time specifically to say, okay, now that I've gone through all this, I've learned what... Uh, uh, what it is to uh, kind of make a painting. How, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? So, yeah. That's, uh, I'm, yeah. I, I'm I'm curious, uh, kind of your own experience, but ask away, ask as many questions as you want. I'm, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, this, this first part is about you and your relationship with art for sure. sure. Um, so, yes. Uh, I mean, for, for me, it took me a while to refer to myself as an artist. And I mean, I didn't have necessarily, I don't know, like a goal or 
uh, list of things that I thought I had to do before kind of earning the title of artist. I don't remember exactly when. I think it was a little bit after I finished undergrad, maybe that I was like, I mean, I think I, I think it's I think I'm comfortable with calling myself an artist now. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, ha, ha, what was that? I mean, because you said that after having a solo show, is is that what you said just now? That after having mm -hmm. a solo show, you were cool. Oh no, a body of work. Sorry. Yeah. So after so, after all, so you know, I mentioned seven years of education. So uh -huh. when you're in the process as a student and you're trying to just learn what your instructors are offering or what they're talking about, because oftentimes it's way over the student's head. So, mm -hmm. you know, when, when I was uh, finally kind of through it and I started to think about my first body of work, that's where it's not that technically I was an artist. I was an artist since I was a little kid. I mean, but just mm -hmm. that was the first time that I was putting together a, a public uh, exhibition where I knew that people would see it and where essentially everything was going to be, you know, out there rather than, studies you know studies you can do as many studies as you want mm -hmm. uh, but it, it, when something's printed and there's a catalog and your friends are going to see it and articles are going to be made it's different so mm -hmm. okay but then but then uh you just said that you were an artist from when you were young like a little yeah. kid mm -hmm. sure okay yeah. okay yeah. so then what is an what is an artist what does an artist do? Well, so I had my first oil painting studio in my parents' garage when I was eight. Okay. So I always, I, I just, I had always been drawn to uh, the arts. You know, I, I didn't grow up in a community that was, uh, we weren't close to museums or anything of that sort. Uh, it was in the Midwest. It was very kind of a small town in the Midwest. So it wasn't uh, like I was, uh, you know, brought up to become this master painter it was just something that i gravitated to and uh another kind of um uh artistic outlet i guess you could say is um video work i've always done when i was younger I, you know i would uh splice together vhs tapes with you know my older brothers of skateboarding you know that kind of thing so like i was really interested in in kind of the the visual compositions of, of filmmaking too, even, you know, as a kid. So, uh, yeah, so it's just, I think art is kind of a, it's just a way to, um, you know, call self-expression something. It's, mm -hmm. Do you yeah. still do video stuff? I do, yeah, constantly. Uh, not so much uh, documentary stuff, but... Um, yeah, I do a lot of a lot more tutorials now compared to um, mm -hmm. when I was younger. Yeah, in 2000, uh, 2012, I did an interview with Antonio Lopez Garcia. Mm -hmm. So I went over to Spain uh, and I was doing a lot more video work back then. And uh, a couple of years ago, I started another video company with some friends. Uh, I'm no longer part of that. But yeah, so I've always been I've, I've always had cameras around me and i've been interested in in uh you know using them for some kind of expression so yeah i mean that must be why you have like this amazing uh shot of you there because it looks like <laughs> oh my god that's a painting you know <laughs> yeah no that's just for yeah I, I filmed the tutorials down here so it's it's set up yeah okay so then i mean would you consider it um would you consider film also a medium for you i mean would you consider it a like you know the oil paint would you consider also film a, your a, one of your mediums i wouldn't just because i'm not like it's not it's not a, a specialty i don't know enough about it but um uh you know it's it's out there i've done you know there was a documentary i made uh i called it an instructional uh, documentary because it was it was filming the process of a painting over two weeks mm -hmm. down in uh argentina when my wife and i lived down there oh that's uh, argentina and, is beautiful yeah it's i mean i've been to buenos aires and buenos yeah, aires is amazing it's amazing mm -hmm. yeah that's where we we lived outside of buenos aires yeah nice yeah so okay. yeah it's been around yeah yes okay um all right so i want to know more about uh so your your painting medium did, did you you said it's oil right yeah yeah um 
when did you, st- oh, you said you started using oil when you were eight. So that's like when yeah. you made your first oil yeah. painting. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you're 40 and you said you're 42 now. Yeah. But okay. So then why were you able to use oil paints at eight years old? <laughs> that yeah. seems really early for a little, for uh, any young individual. I guess sure. I don't know why I have yeah. that impression, but um, yeah, I also yeah, yeah. want to know. I also want to know why you've been using it so long after. <laughs> why do you keep using it? <laughs> sure. So uh, everyone's familiar with Bob Ross, and uh, so when I was little, that's who I liked and who I followed, and I was very passionate about it. So my parents hooked me up with the Bob Ross, you know, oil painting kit, and I was I was really obsessed with it. Uh, so I would set up in the, in the garage exactly as he did. And, uh, so yeah, kind of like, you know, with, again, with skateboarding or anything that because you, you grew up in the Midwest, you're looking at other, like I was looking at California and New York and at eight, nine, 10, whatever it was, I was looking at Bob Ross. So, so that's where the introduction of oil painting comes in. Uh, the, the, uh, love of the medium, I guess, um, didn't happen until in you know i would say young uh late teenager young 20s when i started learning about the classical tradition and uh the impressionists and then just kind of from there uh you know being exposed to uh, art history and you know it's just a it's it's something that has uh been around for a long time and mm-hmm. it's a fabulous medium and uh, I do a little bit of drawing, not as much. Um, and I get into, uh, lately I've been doing a lot of uh, acrylic underpaintings actually underneath mm-hmm. my oil paintings. So mm-hmm. uh, we could talk about that if you want. But yeah, that's uh, a, a little bit of gouache, um, watercolor, that kind of thing. But mainly it's just been oil paint. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I imagine that the acrylic underpainting is because it dries faster, no? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Um, and you don't you don't find that it affects the end result? Like it doesn't it doesn't affect the appearance of the of the oil colors at the end? I mean, I don't know that much about about oil painting at all because I'm, I, okay. I draw. So okay. Yeah. 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 But okay. I wonder well, if there's. Yeah. Um. Well, there's. Um. It's not really that different, I guess, because in the end, it's all covered up. Mm. Uh, but what I love about it is that it can get me further in the process um, the first day. And it's almost, um, you know, I guess if, you, if you're not comfortable with the pencil, which I, uh, that's not my uh, medium of preference. I'm more, uh, I think, in masses. And mm. uh, so acrylic rather than having to deal with some of the oil paint on the surface uh, and push around in that way, it's, it kind of connects drawing and the block in because it dries so quick. You can just kind of almost like create um, patchwork, you know, sections of Mm -hmm. color lines, whatever. And it just dries so quick that I'm constantly thinking how to adjust it and get it more accurate. And then, later on i can deal with glazes and and um modeling form and whatnot with the the oil paint so um why did you say that drawing isn't your preferred preference yeah i just never i've never been comfortable with it i don't know it's interesting okay so you're uncomfortable with it no it's it's just such a very analytical process it's very refined Mm -hmm. the point is very small everything Mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. uh, emphasized and uh there's not a lot of room for error uh, you know, it's just, it's a really intense medium. Yeah. And so okay, that okay. those are things that, you know, for me, uh, I think the gradual process of working uh, up to something a bit more refined is uh, more in my um, expertise. I guess the, the reason why people like my paintings oftentimes is color harmony and brushwork. So it doesn't, mm-hmm. no one like, comes to study with me for drawing you know they they come Mm -hmm. for other stuff and so Mm -hmm. that's uh not that i'm the worst at it i just never would i did it for a long time and i was never i I felt like it just never i I never wanted to pursue that particularly as a medium it was always the the thing that got the painting started Mm -hmm. 
Yes, I the, see. The mapping out the structure, the necessary elements of like building, you know, anatomy, whatever it is. Uh, I never treated it as the finished thing. It was always getting to the painting. Mm. Yeah. So you were you were willing to tolerate it in order to you know just to get to the part that you do. Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I understand it. It's just yeah, it's just not my. It's not my medium, I guess. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, th I mean that that's that's fine. Obviously, I'm just curious uh, about you know why you feel that way. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> what you're what you're going to say something else? No, no, no. I'm just I'm I'm laughing because I know that that's that's your specialty and that's. What oh yeah, I mean no, <laughs> I'm not like taking it personally or anything because it's yeah. like I mean I cannot say that I like oil paint because that's the other thing that I wanted. Yeah. that I was going to ask you. I mean, I do and I don't, because I do like the painting part, you know, when you're actually putting paint on the canvas with your brush and stuff. But I do not, it's, I don't like the part where you have to get all your brushes out and you have to, I don't know, mix colors and just put all, all of the colors on the palette and stuff. And then like, don't yeah. even get me started on when you're done. And then you have yeah. to clean the brushes. Yeah. And and clean the palette? No, I can't. It's like I I do not like that at all, yeah. uh, at all. It's like when when I did because so I guess there's a, I, I guess the other thing that I think is interesting in the relationship between drawing and painting is that I mean paintings are obviously kind of like stronger and they withstand the passage of of time better because you know it's on fabric and mm. the 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 painting the paint becomes bound to the fabric and then it's like this whole this just like becomes a one layer of stuff you know and it, it it withstands time better and it's not like drawings haven't lived you know in quotes this long or anything because we have very old drawings and everything but we were not able to fix drawings until very recently i think i read that the we started attempting to fix drawings around like around like albrecht albrecht durer's time Mm -hmm. And it was like by dipping the drawing in some kind of rabbit skin glue. And then wow. that was like kind of like the first forms of trying to fix a drawing, which is very recent compared to how long painting has existed. Mm -hmm. So like, so like I have this hypothesis that like in the collective conscious, I get consciousness, I guess, um, drawings are still comparatively fragile because we only just started learning that you can fix drawings. It's like, I don't even, it's like the spraying part and doing other stuff like maybe pouring a epoxy resin on drawings that is very recent that's like even more recent so like we're just barely being aware we're barely learning that we can do those things so like it's gonna take a long long time for like drawing to be able to to like catch up in the collective consciousness that it mm -hmm. can withstand a little bit more roughness now because of these additional tools um yeah. um I don't remember where I was going with that, but I just think that relationship is interesting. You know, what do you think about that? Well, the, the, there's also the commercial element, which is uh, not a lot of people like to talk about, but the perception is that oil painting is more expensive, you know? And yeah. so it's just, if, you know, if you're going to do a, a career exclusively in drawing, it's really, it's a difficult hurdle to get over to, to um, obtain that kind of, uh, level of respect where auction houses or uh, you know museums would represent you and and have your works and have them be valued what they are you know we look at like renaissance drawings or whatever and obviously they're valuable but if you go to the studios at any of these schools where the the you know student body is doing incredible work you know there it's just difficult to cultivate the respect for drawing in the same way that oil painting is and so just due to necessity i guess for myself um it was a decision early on that i just you know i didn't do a lot of drawing because it's hard enough there's a there's enough stuff you have to navigate in life um as an artist you know mm -hmm. it's it's taken me a really long time to uh be comfortable with it some people are natural business people. I am not one of those. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so as a kid, you know, you're, you want to, you want to be an artist. You think you're an artist. You're going back to that conversation. And, but you don't, you, you don't realize like no one tells you what you're signing up for 
all this stuff that like, you know, yeah, artists yeah. are just not good at. And so <laughs> um, drawing happens to be one of those things where it, it, it it's going to take a lot longer uh, for the general public to understand that drawing is more difficult than painting because mm. it's so precise and it's so accurate that there's less room for error. There's mm. less things to think about and enjoy because it's, um, it's so precise. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, and, and it's not, it's not the first time that I hear that, especially the art, the thing about the, it being a point, because, you know, you have a pencil, obviously you yeah. have that yeah, point yeah. only. Yeah. Um, and co definitely compared to, to, you know, a brush, a brush, like you have the bristles and then you press it down and they like spread open. And it's like this, Oh, like this ribbon right. of color, you know, uh, which covers a bigger area. And then, I mean, I, I, I can see that point, you know, like it makes a lot of sense. Um, at the same time, and I mean, I'm not trying to like sell it to you or something, but yeah. you know, there's like, <laughs> there's like the blending stones and there's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh -huh, yeah. yeah, yeah. And actually recently, not well, somewhat recently, because it's going to be almost 10 years now, uh, that, that I graduated from the New York Academy. Yeah. I learned when using charcoal, I learned, um, using brushes Yeah, right. to yeah. work. Yeah. And yeah. it's like. That's I've really all cool that because naturally yeah. that's where I gravitate towards. But of course, uh, yes, the and it's not the same, like obviously. Patchwork or line work—that's particularly like really uh, intimidating to me because yeah, uh, that's a uh, you know that's less of the broader sense of drawing. You know, I love obviously like seeing drawings that are a lot of like you know uh, that kind of atmosphere leading up to then tighter edges and so that would be where i would be more comfortable but uh oftentimes when i am drawing it's more about like um the actual precision of it yeah yes yes yeah i agree with you actually a lot about the um what did you just say the cross hatching yeah because yeah. that definitely you can't just make a little tic-tac-toe thingies everywhere you, you can't just do that and yeah, be yeah, yeah. And, and and hope that it's gonna and hope for the best you know you have to know how to orient them and how to cross them and stuff and yeah definitely i i don't think i've seen really very many people you know whose work i like or who's who i think they're good at doing the cross hatching that definitely yeah. requires like yeah i think you said like planning and analytical Mm. or like uh recently um we had the uh, honor of having Stephen Assel uh, come oh, visit yes. our collection and nice uh, you know silver point drawings that stuff you know just oh that's that's even crazy. worse yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's incredible at it yeah yeah, yeah. he's, oh, he's he... actually he's unique because he's incredible at everything so he's yes a super broad painter but he's a very refined draftsman as well so that's uh that's a unique uh, blend of talents did he make a silver point like in, like he de did he demo that for you no no he was just up for dinner ah yeah okay okay yeah, okay because yeah. uh, i mean because i mean i've seen him drawing and yeah i've seen him drawing and it's obviously ridiculous um yeah. but i can't imagine i mean i would imagine that he is also ridiculous with silver point it's like oh i'm sure yeah he's it's insane. like just all right <laughs> um yeah he's good <laughs> he's really good um okay all right so um mr klein what is art in your opinion art uh yeah that's a a great question very broad obviously very big topic uh, that could be debated for a long time mm -hmm. um i think particularly in our time it's very much related to self-expression uh because there's there's less um uh, restraints put on us currently. So we relate it very much to uh, a kind of uh, a individual search for truth. And uh, we use it as a almost a, a way to uh, engage with our thoughts. And um, where I think is historically art was just, it's just been different things. It's different. It continues to evolve and change. And, and, uh, there's no proper answer for it, um, but uh, I think it is some kind of investigative 
uh, pursuit of knowledge, some some tangible kind of uh, uh, form, which you know, activity, which you're you're putting these things together, whether they be composition, uh, you know, again, different kind of color harmonies, depending on your medium, if it's sculpture, or painting. Uh, and painting, it, it, you know, a different kind of, um, you know, all kinds of things. If you think about it, from the abstract level, the thin and thick paint. Um, so it goes, it, it's a broad discussion, but it can get pinned down, if you're, especially if you're an artist, it, on the technical stuff. And like I respond to uh, technical paintings that, that maybe... I don't really particularly care about the subject. And that could be from, uh, you know, a 19th century kind of genre painting to abstract painting. I'm responding to the technical aspect mm -hmm. of the actual materials of like the, the, the way the paint was uh, used uh, on the surface. And so to me, that's kind of tied up in art. But if you're a musical composer, if you're, uh, you know, if you're a... Um, uh, playwright, whatever it is, you know, those are all different categories of, of things that would uh, kind of switch, I guess, the conversation. But yeah, art is very tied into self-expression, I think. Um, why did you say that last bit about music or a musician? Did it cut out or you just are asking again? N no, no, no. I, I mean, I guess I want you to elaborate because... Um, yeah, that's that fine. Uh, yeah. defining art in if yeah. it, it for a musician is different than defining art for a visual artist yeah oh absolutely i mean um, okay. particularly if you're a blind musician i mean you you uh you wouldn't be able to think about the sunset uh in a similar way but you could create harmonies around your experience of the sunset um so the blind person's uh, art uh musical composition about spring or the sunset would be more tied into his senses of of smell and touch and and those would be uh put into the work as where in my case it's uh very much a kind of visual phenomenon it's a pursuit of um of the things that i'm experiencing on um you know the optics and how optics work and and uh, the physics of light and those kind of things. So yeah, I think they're different. Uh, they they are related, but they're different. So you know, obviously the arts, quote unquote. Um, you know, again, like a sculptor is not thinking about the chroma of red, or maybe sometimes they are, depending on the finish of their piece. But typically, it's a it's a more gestural kind of three dimensional pursuit of expression. Okay, so. So in your opinion, art now is, I mean, in, you know, in the present for us yeah, yeah. is, is more a medium of expression. Um, yeah. I mean, does that seem right? It's a, it's just like yeah. a, a way uh -huh. for us to express yeah. ourselves. Okay. So then what would you say that art was in the Renaissance? Uh, well, so yeah, like going back to the idea of pursuit of, of truth and beauty and so today let's say for instance you know just a really uh, uh, kind of blatant example of like a banana taped to a wall mm -hmm. like that's art because it's a it's a self-expression like somebody really like wanted to push the limits of what could be done and what could be thought about and and so technically that's art uh, uh, there's less boundaries on what art is Mm -hmm. And I think during the Renaissance, it was it was more tied into uh, the sciences and and uh, a, a very kind of uh, mathematical pursuit of understanding beauty and, and knowledge. And it wasn't just what we felt. You know, there was different, obviously, uh, eras of kind of philosophy that came after that that opened up the box of this art form that we experience today. But um yeah, I mean, I think the arts in the past, uh, apart from uh, being kind of a vehicle for uh, the church for many, many years, it was, I think it was a pursuit of knowledge and science. It was a mm -hmm. uh, breaking, you know, boundaries as far as you, you just thinking about da Vinci and anatomy and, 
and perspective and understanding optics and um yeah so that was a further pursuit of the truth and thinking about the cosmos and whatever you know it was, it was just kind of tied into the arts and um yeah so i think that today when we talk about art it's different than in the past when you talk about art mm -hmm. so um as long as uh, a person is expressing something uh, anything yes and they make something with which they're trying to express that something or that anything then that the result of that expression is art technically yeah that's kind of where we've ended up so in other words um you know uh maybe 99 of the art that's done in the world today i probably don't uh particularly find interesting just because mm -hmm. I, I i specialize in a in a niche of the art world that is uh you know it has these kind of uh just let's say by defining it as realism i'm already eliminating a ton of other stuff you know so it's just but that's what i like so it's not that the other stuff is wrong it's just you at some point you have to pick uh something you know and kind of there's a reason why i'm not an abstract painter it's not because I don't necessarily like it. I, I just I'm more passionate about uh, operating in the in in the realm of of uh, you know having it look like something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, so you've interviewed several people now. It sounds like yeah, and, yeah. I'm sure everybody's answer is different. Uh, what is your uh, kind of growth been or what's your uh, uh, kind of takeaway from talking about art apart from, you know, studying philosophy? Well, um, I still, I wouldn't say that I know much better what it is now, you know, at least in my opinion. Sure. But... Um, I have gotten more comfortable with not considering art, lots of things, kind of, kind of, I've slowly kind of given myself permission to be like, no, that's not art. And just be like, that's not art. Mm. Uh, you know, like the, I don't even want to give them airtime by mentioning yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. whatever it is. Um, it's just like, no, that's not art. And kind of like being comfortable with that. Because, I mean, before, I sort of thought that I just had to, and I mean, when I say before, I mean, you know, undergrad and just like, uh, after that, like, my youth. Because, I mean, it's very common in uh, artistic teaching when you go to school that um, the other stuff that isn't drawing the figure, or drawing a landscape, drawing animals, or, or painting, you know, learning how to draw those things or paint those things accurately... Um, it's, it's the, the other quote unquote, the other things are kind of allowed to be called art or something. I mean, it's a bit, it's common still. It's like lots of people will say that anything is art. Anything can be art, Yeah. but, but it's just that. So my problem with that is that it just doesn't make any sense to me mm. or, or at least it recently stopped making sense to me because the term exists for a reason. And the term exists, the term exists to discern the things that are art. Um, now, why the things that are art are art, mm. I don't know. I don't know yet. Mm. Um, there are some, so I'm reading um, The Art Instinct by Dennis Dutton. Okay. And uh, he has a, a section where he's like, yeah, I mean, trying to argue about those outlier things whether they're art or not is not productive it's better to kind of look at the things that are obviously art like you know leonardo da vinci and whatever look at his stuff and then try to learn from what that can tell us so he then lists 12 characteristics of art and 
as kind of like, I don't know, kind of like requirements in a way that uh, yeah. something that wants to call itself art kind of has to have yeah. Yeah. to kind of earn the title in a sure. way. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, something, something like that. It, I, yeah. oh, I also think it's important <laughs> art mm -hmm. and I think it's important to, to at the very least, or at least it is, is uh, for me, it's important to rem remember that it is important and why is important and what it is and not kind of not take it too, too lightly because, um, I don't know. Yeah. It's important for, I don't know. What do you think about the rant? <laughs> well, so what, you, what I'm thinking about as you say that is, so it's art is also an embodiment of culture. It's so we have different cultures throughout the world through different times. Sure. And the arts from those cultures are very fascinating. So absolutely, uh, that's why I I kind of resist the temptation to put it put it in a box because it's just a fascinating kind of thing that has occurred over time that people tend to gravitate towards using art and arts as a way to tap into this kind of emotional experience experience with our own life experience and then to share that with other people because mm. you're engaging with your thoughts as you're as you're producing these things you're engaging with your thoughts you're you're uh you're sharing those thoughts without um you know writing it down unless you're doing a novel or something you know uh so yeah i just think i'm really careful not to define it too much because i like to leave it open for uh you know historians to figure out it's it's mm. not it's not what i'm called to figure out I, mm. i'm more yeah. of a practitioner of the arts than a definer of the arts yeah. sure yeah no that's fair um and yeah. actually that's something else that dennis Dutton mentions i mean i haven't finished it i'm not even halfway through it's yeah. kind of embarrassing yeah. but whatever uh the thing is that i have gotten through the part where he mentions that it's like i mean art is cross-cultural and cross time right yeah so it's like the whatever art is because it's funny like the part that has the characteristics of art is called what is art and then he doesn't define it <laughs> uh he doesn't provide any kind of a definition <laughs> of it which is kind of funny and annoying but um but in whatever like at least in the characteristics of art that he's talking about it's like that includes the uh art of just worldwide and not like not like the trash joke stuff that gets into moma it's like um, just, you know, all the cultures and tribes and you that you can think of, or, you know, like, quote, unquote, illiterate people or quote, unquote, whatever you want to call them. That is also art. And also, um, you know, according to him, I mean, I agree with him, of course. Yeah. Um, because so I think I think I think another good reason to try to um, kind of fence the term a little bit, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um is because i guess because of the discernment and it's important too and you know i think the reason for which for which so many other things want to usurp the term is because we you know humans we know that it's important so like we want to ascribe the importance of art to something that we consider important so yeah. Um, even though the, whatever it is that we're trying, whatever object we're trying to, we want to ascribe the importance of art to isn't art. It's like, you know, that whatever it is feels very important. So we want to be like, oh my God, that is art. So mm -hmm. for example, um, I learned a story in a previous episode of a guy, uh, Rauschenberg gave another famous artist of the time, a drawing. And the guy that received the drawing, like erased it because he was mad or whatever. Mm. I don't remember who the guy was, mm. but it was another famous guy. Anyway, so the thing is that that drawing is apparently in MoMA as a work of art, okay? And in my opinion, that is not a work of art. That is an, that is an object, that is a historical object. I mean, just because it has a cool story doesn't mean that it's art. It was art when the drawing was on it, maybe, right? But then, just because like artists were involved and it was like an artist kerfuffle because artist drama or whatever because we're selling tanks i mean it doesn't mean that the resulting object 
is art. It's a historical object of art history, in, in, in my mm -hmm. opinion. What do you think about that bit? Well, I, I mean, uh, you know, again, it's it's up for um, historians to figure out because if if art or artifacts are left over from a culture and it's kind of a, a, a testament to the culture and the time period that we existed in, then that's a that's that's kind of fair game because that really represents the world we live in that people are fascinated by things that you know are are it's 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 a different time so you know if you go to any kind of uh, modern art museum they're they're fascinated by different things it's not a, a, a you know our world is no longer um you, you you know like i often think of the impressionists and and you it existed during a time where there was no color photography so of course it's fascinating because it you know and it still is fascinating for some people but um it would have been much more interesting as it was new and fresh and uh you know there's if you're gonna if you're gonna be depicted in color anywhere in the world if you're going to show your cousins or your ancestor you know any any uh your relatives you know it's like it, you have to do it through paint so it's just a different it's a different time and so i don't i don't um try to discredit the contemporary art world even though i disagree with it oftentimes I, but i i just can't uh you know, spend time actually worrying about it too much. It, it, it was mm -hmm. an interesting um, hurdle, I guess, at some point in my life. I just got over it. I just didn't, I, I no longer care. Mm -hmm. I yeah, focus okay. on the things I'm passionate about and, and you can only do your part in trying to make something really interesting and profound uh, by focusing on, on what you need to do as opposed to focusing on all that kind of noise that's out there mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah yeah for sure i mean that's definitely good advice in a way mm -hmm. and it, it's something that i definitely practice because it takes practice if yeah. one is not used to that stuff um meaning focusing on something that'll that's gonna piss you off or frustrate you or make you feel bad versus yeah, yeah, yeah. versus focusing on the things that will that will you know, edify you, make you feel better and make you feel more positive and more productive. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I guess, I guess, I guess for me, it's just that I was always bothered by my drawings having to compete with just stuff that made no sense to me. Mm -hmm. Like, um, cause it's like, you know, why would one of my drawings have to sit next or, you know, show next to like the canned artist shit, for example, mm -hmm. or, or, you know, just something, I don't know, you know, yeah. something like that. I mean, I mean, how do you feel about that? I guess if you, if you, well, yeah, I mean, speaking of, of that particularly, I mean, there's a lot of bad realism too. So yeah. you get into almost like either, you know, if 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 you're going to be totally honest and uh, quite blunt, you know, it's 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 there's a lot of bad stuff out there. Sure. And so, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah, you get into the conversation of connoisseurship and, you know, refinement and elegance and um, and aesthetics and so you know each artist is going to have their opinion about what is good you know even in the project that i'm uh involved with the curator and the owner of the museum is uh i'm very close with her and we share a lot of uh the same ideas but i've learned over the years that everybody if you were to start a museum and if uh you know one of your previous guests uh, michael grimaldi or mm. milane uh, Fernandez or myself, everyone would do a different kind of cura mm -hmm. curatorial kind of experience of. Uh, so I I think that it's all so unique, it's all so personal and so unique that that's kind of where the magic and the beauty comes from. Is that mm -hmm. it's so tied into our personalities 
that even if we try to break free of it, we can't. It's it's mm-hmm. like, and sometimes it's almost embarrassing. It can be negative too. Like I I, I uh, used to say that, you know, my entire soul as a person is kind of revealed in this thin layer of paint for the world to kind of <laughs> destroy basically if they mm-hmm. want to, because if you're a boring person, you're going to paint boring paintings, or if you just right. if you don't have good taste or whatever it may be, mm-hmm. um, it's really going to come out in your art. So it's it's it, that's why I think people uh, are so sensitive and so like kind of in, introspective or whatever. You know, they take things so personal because it really is a manifestation of their their heart and soul and their spirit. And mm-hmm. so uh, yeah, it's a it's a it's a very vulnerable thing. Like for instance, my, my father was a, a, a dentist, he's retired and uh, he's still alive. But uh, I think that he was um, his, his fault being a dentist. And this is, I say this in a, in a really kind of respectful way. was, he was a very artistic dentist. Mm-hmm. And so he was very interested in the art of like how good the dentistry was. And right. And if you come up against a dentist who's a business person and they're good at marketing and getting commercials and getting their name out there and having the right, right kind of staff and, and, you know, like um, calling people back and making sure to make those appointments and stuff, you will be a more successful dentist than the dentist who's, who's sure. trying to make the best possible crown that the technology can act actually Yes. So it's just, you know, it exists all over the place. And unfortunately, you would think, well, I want the best dentist. But what happens is people get duped by the marketing or whatever. Yeah. If it just says that this is the best dentist in your area, then it's like, well, people just trust it. So it's mm-hmm, very mm-hmm, similar mm-hmm. to art. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. I Yeah. I like this. I like this a lot. And especially <laughs> the part about the dentist part made me smile a lot because my husband had to have one of his wisdom teeth removed and he was referred to a guy when he went to the dentist like a quote unquote right i I don't know what the difference is the thing is that the guy he was referred to specialized in removing wisdom teeth and this guy does not take insurance because he is that good okay (laughs) yeah and um it was just ridiculous because because he kind of wedged to, to, I mean, this is irrelevant to the conversation, but I just, I, I'm just like agreeing with your dad, I guess, yeah. with the whole yeah. thing about kind of like developing a style almost, or like polishing your skill so that it becomes, so that you are the one that discovers what works really well for you and for the person that you're servicing, basically. Because I mean, we service people as well as art, visual artists, you know, but then this guy, he kind of like wedged his, my, my husband's tooth out with these tools that kind of looked like chisels, but they were like different thicknesses of uh, chisel looking things. And then he kind of mm-hmm. wedged it out that way. And I was like, this guy, and he was working standing mm-hmm. while my husband was like sitting back. And I was like, this fucking guy is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't have that much experience with dentists at all. I mean, I've been to the dentist and whatever, but not yeah, as much yeah. as to be able to discern who is good and who is bad. But yeah. this guy is so mind-blowingly good that it was like obvious to me, layperson, that this guy is freaking amazing. Yeah. You know, it's like it, I was like, wow. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so, it was it was yeah, crazy. So word of mouth, you know, if he is if he's as good as you say he is, then the word will get out, and that happens in the art world too. You know, it does, sure, yeah, it yeah, happens. absolutely. That, like people talk about how incredible someone is, and and they just kind of rise to the top, I guess. Particularly in the art that we like, and um, and it's less about kind of maybe it's it's a it's a um, a blend, but it's less about who they are as a person and more about their their actual the thing that they're making. Mm. Uh, but I'll I'll point out now that uh, for anyone listening that is, um, you know, deep in the thick of uh, trying to sell their their work, uh, the buyer is investing in you as a person as much as they are the art. I think it's oh, really of course. They're, they're really connected. Yeah. So uh, yes. if you are under the um, belief that it's all about how good it is, mm. it's a it's a mistake because um you know the little bit of art acquisition that i've done uh it's very much about 
who the artist is as well. Even mm. if they're yeah, for sure. extremely gifted, it's it's mm. just it's kind of a combination of the two. It's uh, yeah, it yeah, it is for sure. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that was another thing I wanna I wanna mention real quick about the before the de gushing about the dentist. Yeah. Um, because you said something about bad art uh, earlier, and a previous guest uh, mentioned an analogy with food about how there's good food and bad food, which yeah. I really, really liked. And I feel like it really works with art and trying to define, I mean, not define art, but just kind of thinking about it in the sense that there is good and bad food, of course, because there's health mm -hmm. food, there's unhealthy food, but there are things that are not food. <laughs> so mm -hmm. like, I, uh, I like that analogy as well for art, because of course, there's of course, there's going to be bad art. It's like not everyone can be a prodigy at it, you know, but there are still things or, or, you know, for me, it works really well in the sense that there are still things that are not art. There are going to be things that are not art. Um, yeah. Yeah, something I, I like mean, that. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm okay to say that there's things that are not art. Um, depending on how you look at it. I mean, I don't, mm. I don't think many people would think of a rock as being art, but uh, you know, whatever, uh, yeah. You know, you obviously you can get into it and and have theories about what makes it art, but I mean that's that that's a different discussion. But yeah, sure. for the most part, you don't eat rocks and you don't think of rocks as art, so that's a fair, uh, I think, comparison. Yes. Uh, okay, um, Mr. Klein. Then, what is beauty in your opinion? Uh, beauty. Uh, so. Beauty is complicated as well because that gets into um, uh, a sense of of uh, again it, uh, it's so much is tied to a personal perspective nowadays that um, that the discussion is a very sensitive one because if you were to mm -hmm. say that a baby's not beautiful and you know every mother thinks that their baby is the most beautiful baby in the world so mm -hmm. um you know, you would be basing it off of kind of shallow, uh, superficial, um, you know, uh, maybe ideals of beauty. And mm -hmm. uh, the real beauty underneath the, the superficial is the connection, the human connection between the mother and the child, as opposed to what the structure of the baby's nose looks like, or the eyes, mm -hmm. or the hair color, or skin color, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, so beauty, I think, can go beyond uh, the uh, the normal experience of of our day to day existence, and it can uh, tap into kind of the um, the deeper ideas of um, you know a spiritual elements of existence and. Um, and with that then comes thinking about beauty as as um, the value we place on beauty. So the argument that we exist in the world today that someone could say that a shopping cart is really beautiful, particularly like a Walmart shopping cart because it, it serves this beautiful purpose of serving so many underprivileged uh, citizens that can pick up, you know, their great deal right that's a beautiful thing well aesthetically if you were to think about it as art and beauty then well, of course it's it's not beautiful mm -hmm. um so you know it it just depends on what the definition is so it's it's always so much about like how you define the word and um in what context and and what you what you're thinking about so mm -hmm. yeah yeah i definitely agree that Beauty is uh, thought of, commonly thought of, or mistakenly and commonly thought of as only the aesthetic, you know, what you see um, of whatever it is that you're looking yeah. at. Yeah. Um, and that's definitely, I mean, I, I don't think it's necessarily wrong, but it's definitely an oversimplification. Absolutely. of what of what beauty is because like i definitely think that the visual aspect is part of the experience of beauty um but it's not the only part of the experience not and and not 
and not the most important necessarily either. Um, um, because I mean, I think that viewing something is a conduit to beauty in the sense that, you know, you have to know of this Walmart thing and the people who are able to purchase stuff for cheap at Walmart where they wouldn't be able to otherwise, you have to know of it and maybe see it, you know, you have to sense it first via your brain before you can derive that sense of beauty from it. Yeah, or um, go back so, to the food. And go sorry to interrupt, but go back yeah. to food. I don't I don't a lot of people when uh they enjoy a meal, they don't think of it as beautiful. But you could say that was a beautiful dinner experience or that's a mm -hmm, beautiful mm -hmm. plate, but you don't eat it and say, Oh, that's beautiful. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could. I mean, it, sure. It, it, you know, it, it, obviously, it's a way you could express kind of the intricacies of of your palate or whatever. But most of the time, there's other vocabulary to express the flavors, and um, so yeah, beauty is tapped into kind of. It's just a, a general blanket statement for things that are difficult to really under, understand and and. Um, you know, hard to put your finger on exactly what it is, but we use the expression "it's beautiful" because it, it hits deep down in our our being that it's important and it's valuable. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But um, so why do you think it's important and valuable? And what or what do you think it feels important and valuable at least? Well, uh, so yeah. I mean, I'm just thinking about. Um, you know, the beauty of a sunrise and sunset, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, the the things that change is our perspective of where we're at on the globe, right? Looking at the mm -hmm. sun and the way mm -hmm. it's uh, being refracted through the atmosphere and the, the color spectrum that we're seeing. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the actual physics of it, I guess it's, you know, um, there's certain variables, but some can be really beautiful and others can be kind of beautiful. And, you know, it's just this, like, it's, it's, it's the way that you experience a moment. Uh, again, like if you have, let's say, I don't have kids, but if you have like 10 kids, uh, you know, is every birth as beautiful as the next or are they, were some more beautiful than others? I don't know. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, are they all the exact same? Um, so it's, it's, tied into our experience of the moment and what what makes that beautiful is a you know just a memory or something that makes life meaningful and um so you could say the same thing about um a work of art you know as you go to a museum it's your engagement it's your interaction with that um in order to have a really profound experience sometimes i think oftentimes at least for me uh, I, I I have to be alone. Um, mm -hmm. If I'm with someone that I I'm not completely connected with, I won't engage with the art the, the same way because my my maybe my vulnerabilities are not the same, and so I'm not as I'm not as, as uh, open connected. Yeah, so mm. I may not have as beautiful of an experience or something of that sort. So yeah, it's 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 everything is so relative. It's hard to pin down anything. Mm -hmm. I've been thinking that both art and beauty are really much more prevalent than at least I've been led to believe. Um, that it's that that they're uh, like, well, I said art is cross cultural and cross time. And I also really like the idea uh, of beauty as that as well, cross cultural and cross time. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I like the idea as well because. Like, I agree that to a certain extent, like, you know, what you were saying, that it's dependent on the person because, of course, uh, we are individuals. We're individualized as we age. But at the same time, I kind of I kind of have the hypothesis that at least the feeling that uh, experiencing beauty the feeling the person derives from that, I, I I have the hypothesis that it's probably the same or at least very, very similar for everyone who is experiencing beauty. 
Mm. Uh, and it makes a lot of sense to me because, well, beauty can be beauty can be found anywhere, and anyone can experience beauty because we have everyone has the same hardware, um, and we're not that different. You know, we're really not that different at all. Um, and so it just makes a lot of sense to me that the experience of beauty, even if the taste, even if what, what one person to the next considers beautiful is just a little bit different from one person to the other or very different from one person to the other. It's like the experience of beauty. I really like the idea of it just being the same, feeling the mm -hmm. same. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, yeah. uh, to, just to, I, I won't get too into it, but because I don't know how much time we have left, but uh, the, I think it actually can vary pretty considerably from, from person to person as far as as how much you've been uh exposed to mm -hmm. uh so you know i think that uh understanding beauty is uh, a lifelong pursuit and uh, my perception of what's beautiful continually changes and it goes through periods and and i think some things are beautiful at times and others not and so it, it fluctuates. And so I think that it also fluctuates between um, the amount of time that people invest in it. And, um, you know, I think we're creatures of habit, you know, in the sense that yeah. like people just kind of go about their day, they're, they're just trying to survive. And so the more free time you have to be able to think about things and to be able to ponder um, that's a luxury that some other people don't have. And um, so it it opens those, of the, you know, the people who have more time to contemplate, um, you know, just speaking for myself, you know, I, I, I do this full time. I have lots of time to think about these things. And um, whereas other other people are in, in a situation where they have to deal with a coworker, mm -hmm. they have to you know, operate a train or whatever. So it just, it becomes less and less important depending on the task at hand. But if this is your livelihood and this is what you talk about or think about, it becomes uh, emphasized in, in ways that most people would think is probably, to be totally honest, kind of insane. You know, it's just mm -hmm. the amount of, that we think about these things. So. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. So, well, um, we indeed have reached the hour long mark, uh, Mr. Klein. And well, we were able, we were able to talk about art for a long, or, uh, you know, about art for a while there, but then it didn't leave much, that much time, like not the same amount of time to talk about beauty. So I'm going to start to close it out. Um, Michael, why don't you, uh, you know, is there anything you want to add? Where your work and your work be found? What are you up to these days? Do you have any projects coming up? Is there anything you're excited about? Sure. Uh, yeah. I mean, I can give, um, uh an update on the things I'm working on. Uh, so I'm involved with the New Salem Museum, which is uh, in Western Massachusetts. It's a, a private collection from a family out of Boston that um, they're building a museum to house the collection. Um, so that can be found at newsalemmuseum.com, the, the story of that. Uh, I have a show in LA in February of a new work with a gallery at Maxwell Alexander Gallery. Uh, nice. so that's next year. And, uh, yeah, I run a small business that's called Pashad Palette and you can check it out at pashadpalette.com. So those are my things that I'm actively pursuing. Okay. That's lovely. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah. <laughs> actually, now, now that you said New Salem Museum, I think it's actually through Malen that, um, sure. Yep. She's been up here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. So I, I think that's actually how I, I like it. Sure. You know, decided to reach out to you. Okay, good. That's yeah. cool. I really liked my, the conversation with her. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. she's great. Yeah. yeah, she's awesome. Okay. All right. So, well, uh, thank you everyone for watching and listening. Uh, special thanks to my guest, Michael, for agreeing to talk to me and uh, for his time. If you'd like to support Michael, my podcast, myself, or all three, all corresponding links will be in the caption. Make sure you like this video and leave a comment so we know you were with us. Also remember to subscribe to my audiovisual channel and uh, thank you again. See you next time, everyone. Bye.